Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. 2021 release wave one is well on their way, but there's still new features obviously that are being added. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss a feature in Dynamics 365 field service that is currently in preview. With this feature, you can enable your customers to use the portal for self scheduling. There's a little bit of setup that you have to do besides installing the field service portal. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing that you'll need to do is to install that field service portal in your environment. So you have to go to make.powerapps.com and then obviously make sure you're in the correct environment. And then you can click here on create and you're going to start from a template because that's how you're going to go ahead and install that field service portal. So here you can see this is the field service portal so you can just go ahead and click on that and you can see here it says that i already have the maximum limit of field service app portals because i already have it installed but basically what you're going to do is you're going to enter a name you're going to enter a web address right that url and you can even click on this hover over this i should say and it says right here, you can enter your subdomain for the portal over here. And if you need to change that later, you can do that later as well. Then you're going to go ahead and click whatever language select, I should say, whatever language you want to use for the portal. And then you can just click on create and that will start that installation process. And then once the portal is installed, you'll see some things happening in Dynamics 365 as well, right? You'll see some of these solutions are going to get installed. And if you then navigate here to field service, you notice here that I have an additional section that's called customer portal, where I can now go in and configure some of those portal capabilities. And this is where you can configure that track my technician. I actually did an article and a video on that previously. So I'm not going to obviously get into that with this video. In this video, I'm really going to talk about, like I said earlier, the self scheduling functionality, which is currently in preview. So let's take a look here. So you can just go ahead and click here on customer portal and then after this loads, I'm actually going to open that settings record that we have for the portal. So this is that settings record. You can just go ahead and click on that. And this is where you can set up some of those configuration options. So as you can see, you can turn the track by technician on and on or off from here. This is where you can turn on the self scheduling and you can see here it says send self scheduling experience to account contacts. So basically what that does, if I turn this off and then I turn it on again, right? As you can see here, um, you're going to be able to send an email to invite some of these customers when new contacts are added to an active field service account. But then you can also send the invitation to any existing contacts for, you know, who haven't yet received this invite. So this is where you can click here on existing and new accounts, or you can just leave it for new accounts only from here as well. And then you can see below here, some of that messaging, right? When are we sending some of these messages out? When a booking is confirmed, we're going to send a booking reminder. Uh, there's a timing reminder. You can see here, technician traveling, booking, cancel, booking, reschedule, booking completed. So you can pick the type of messages, right? Then you can set your communication type. I have this set to email, but obviously you can see that I can also enable this for SMS. If I have an SMS provider 
And then we can see here the send messages to field, which again is a drop down. And this is actually an option that's going to allow you to send the message to either write the primary contact of the service account, the reported by contact that's on the work order, or the supported by contact, which is also on the work order. Now I am going through this, but keep in mind that this send messages to setting is only used uh, with the technician locator or, or track my technician, whatever you want to call it with that feature messages for self scheduling will actually be sent to the reported by contact because this is the person on the customer side who actually created that work order and, and that booking as well. So the customer contact who actually created that work order, right, will automatically be set as that reported by contact on the work order. And then uh, you can, this is another preview, right? If you want to include a survey and you, here you can see where you need to go in order to configure uh, the SMS connector. And that's really when you click on that, that's going to take you to that particular power automate flow where you can turn it on, you can turn it off, right? This is that flow uh, that's actually sending those email notifications uh, for the field service power apps portal. So that's, that's kind of how you can get to that. So I really like that. I thought that was great that they put those links in here. So you don't have to dig through all of these solutions. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, um, you can exclude certain work order types from messaging and the same thing goes here for accounts as well. Now, keep in mind, these are related to all messages. It doesn't care whether or not it's for track my technician or self scheduling. It's all messages. So you got to kind of be careful with that, right? If you're going to exclude certain work order types or accounts from that, from the messaging. Now, when you actually set these fields to track my technician and the self scheduling preview to yes, you'll notice that that corresponding tab now shows up. So you can then click on self scheduling preview and there's some additional settings that you can configure here as well. So the first one is that minimum lead time for new bookings in days. This is actually calculated from the current day for which the customer can schedule their bookings. And you got to Keep in mind that these days include weekends. So as an example, if the minimum lead time is set to one day and today is June 1st, then the first day the customer can schedule service is on June 2nd, right? Because that's one day after uh, today's day. And then you have the maximum lead time for new bookings, also in days. Similar, right? This is the maximum lead time, again, calculated from the current day, for which your customer can schedule their booking. So if that lead time is set to 30 days and today is June 1st, then the first day the customer can schedule, or I should say the last day the customer can schedule service is 30 days after that day, again, including weekends, which is July 1st. So again, keep that in mind. Then we have enable asset selection. So if you set this to yes, then when the customer is on the portal and they're scheduling or getting ready to self schedule, they're actually going to be able to select a customer asset that's related to their account as well for, for that particular service. And the enable initial, initial details, that's actually going to show you like a comment box or additional details box directly on the portal. And when people enter information in there, then that is actually added to uh, the related booking that will be created as a note. So you're going to see a note that's associated with that booking. And then we have lastly include resource with maximum travel radius. So this indicates the maximum distance from the scheduled work, uh, right? how far the scheduled work is from the resources, right? And this is where you can set that maximum amount. Keep in mind, this is calculated in kilometers, right? Not in miles. 
So for example, um, if you set this to 25, then all resources that are going to be considered are within that 25 kilometer radius. Now, if you set this to zero, then that means that there's not going to be a maximum radius active. So that's really all that you have to configure here on the portal settings, but you still need to do something else as well. So once you've done this, you obviously need to save that, right? And then what you can do here is, let me see if I can find it. You want to go to incident types over here. And if you open up an incident type, let me just go here to my alarm system installation. You can see here, there's an additional field. There's actually two additional fields that have been added. You see here, enable for C2. If you set that to yes, I think this hides that field. Yeah, if you set that to yes, you're gonna see this display name also becoming visible. And, and this is really the display of the service that will be shown to the customer when they're trying to self schedule. So once you've done that, once you have selected a couple of incident types, uh, you can also actually look at this view incident types for C2. This is a list of the incident types that will be available for customers for self scheduling. So that's really all the setup that you need to do. Uh, and then you can start testing this, right? So let's actually, uh, first kind of show you how you can manually invite an existing test contact. I would, I was having some issues with, uh, you know, when I was sending automatically sending those invitations that it didn't really work out and like nothing really happened. So what you could do here is you can go to a contact. I actually have, I'm actually going to go. Yeah. Let me go here to contacts. Let's go here to Deborah. And what you can do is, is right. Once you open that contact record, I'm going to go ahead and click on create invitation. You can see here, right? I have my name. I have my type. You can put other information on here. You can also assign this to an account if you wanted to, um, and then what you can do is what you have to do here is you're just going to go ahead and save that. There you go. And if you click on advanced, this is that invitation code that you're going to use to redeem that. So let me keep that open here. Now, what you have to do is you actually have to go to your portal. And then the question is, okay, where do I find my portal URL? Well, you should have kept that, uh, when you were creating your portal. But if you don't remember that, then you can just go back here to your customer portal, open up your portal settings. And here is my field service portal. And that is actually what holds your URL or your primary domain name. So you're going to grab that and then you're going to copy and paste that into a browser. And then you're going to click here on schedule service now. And you're going to click on redeem invitation. And then I'm going to go back here to that invitation code. I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to go back here to my URL and you can click register. And then, right, it's already picking up your email address. You can put in a username, a password, and it will then save that information, obviously, and then log you in as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the password in there and register. And you can, as you can see, you can make some updates here and then you can start with the self scheduling. There we go. So I'm actually going to log out of Deborah and log in as somebody else. So let's just sign out here. And then let me sign in as Dylan.
Okay, so you can see here that Dylan is located in Florida. Let's go ahead and now self schedule. So this is that when you turn this on, that setting that I showed you earlier, enable asset selection, you can see here that it says here service product, that is that customer asset. So if you turn that on, they can select the customer asset, but they can also select none from here as well. So let's do none. Let's choose a service type. These are those incident types that I enabled, right? Let's just say that's gonna be a standard inspection. And then I can go ahead and select my date and time of that service. So let's just give it a second here, right? Today is the 10th. So I cannot put any service in until tomorrow on the 11th or after that, right? And even if I go further up until the 9th of June, because my, I have set the max to 30 days. Let's just pick tomorrow and then I can pick a time that's available. Let's say we're going to do noon and this is my local time, right? The time that the customer is located in. So I'm going to go ahead and say noon. I can put some additional information in here. That was again, that setting, right? That I talked to you guys about earlier. This is going to actually attach a note to the booking. So I'm going to please enter on the south side. And then I'm going to go ahead and click book. So what happened in field service is that the system actually created the work order and then it also scheduled the work order. So it also created that bookable resource booking as well. Okay, so now let's take a look in field service. I'm gonna go back here to my schedule board and we are looking here at Tuesday 5.11 and I, I just wanted to mention real quick that you can see here that I am on my New York schedule board and the territories in this schedule board has resources from New York and Florida. I'm actually the only resource in my entire field service instance uh, that is in Florida and that's close to that location in Florida, right? That booking that was just created by the customer. Now, in order to very quickly kind of see who was the person that got assigned to that work order, right? I'm going to see, I'm going to search for bookings created now, just now, right? So I can see here that this William Contoso is the guy that got assigned. But if I look at his, let me just go back here to his resource record. If I look at his related territories, he doesn't have any, right? He's actually pretty far away from this work order. If I now open up this work order, you can see here that this work order is in the Florida service territory. But as you can see, the system does not assign the right person to this work order because I want to assign somebody that's obviously also in that Florida territory. So I did want I did want to mention that. Now again, this is still in preview, right? So probably a lot of this stuff is going to be resolved uh, because I did talk to Microsoft and I did let them know that hey, this is definitely a very important feature, right? We want to make sure that the resource in the correct service territory, right, is in, in the same service territory, obviously, as the work order as well. All right, so let's take a look here at that email notification that was sent. As you can see here, we're going to have a reschedule button directly on that email. And then when I click on that, let me just click on reschedule. It will then again take you back to the portal where you can select or the customer can select, right? A different date and a different time, put in some additional information again, right? Which is that note. So I haven't shown you the note yet. So let's just go back here to that booking. Let 
All right, let's go to the timeline. And here is that note from the customer. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Stay safe, everybody.